Carburetor icing might seem like it's just a cold weather issue, but it isn't. It can catch you unprepared on a warm, humid day. While you might think of ice on wings or control surfaces, it can actually form inside your engine and restrict both airflow and power. The hard part is that it creeps in slowly, so by the time you notice a drop in RPMs or a sluggish throttle, it could be too late. Luckily, preventing carburetor icing is straightforward. Let's get to the bottom of what you need to watch for and how to stay ahead of the problem. What is a carburetor? The carburetor is the section of an engine where fuel and air are mixed in the correct proportions before being drawn into the cylinders and ignited. The carburetor forms part of the aircraft throttle system. The more air and fuel drawn into the carburetor, the greater the power produced by the engine. Carburetors work using the Venturi effect. If you are unfamiliar with this principle as air, or any fluid, is drawn through a restricted passage, two effects occur. The speed of the air will increase, the pressure of the air will drop. At the narrowest part of the Venturi, there is a fuel line. As a result of the pressure drop, the Venturi draws in fuel, where it is mixed with the air forming a vapor that makes its way into the cylinders. The rate at which the air is drawn through the carburetor is controlled by a hinged valve called a butterfly valve. This butterfly valve is directly linked to your throttle controls. Full throttle means the butterfly valve is fully open. With the throttle back at idle, the butterfly valve is nearly closed. Understanding the butterfly valve and how it works with the throttle is an important concept. The observant among you will have noticed something. While the carburetor is a venturi, a similar effect can be observed around the butterfly valve too, as the airflow narrows and is restricted there also. This means that icing can form in two places within the carburetor, within the main venturi itself, leading to air starvation, and around the butterfly valve, leading to degraded throttle control. Generally speaking, Carburetor icing is more likely to form around the butterfly valve. This is a significant problem. Carb icing tends to happen at low power settings, such as when making an approach. With the throttle at idle on the final approach, the pilot may be unaware that icing has formed until they come to apply power for a missed approach. The result? The power they need isn't available and the throttle is unresponsive, leading to disastrous consequences. There are two reasons why carburetor icing occurs. A drop in air pressure within the carburetor, evaporation of fuel within the carburetor. Let's take a look at both in sequence. Here's a little physics, but don't worry, it isn't complicated. Quite simply, according to Boyle's law, when air pressure drops, the air temperature reduces. When air is compressed, called high pressure, molecules are pushed closer together and collide, causing a temperature rise. The inverse is also true. As we've already seen, carburetors are a venturi system. Pushing air through a venturi causes a pressure drop and, therefore, a drop in temperature. While the ambient air might be well above freezing, its temperature is reduced to sub-zero temperatures as it passes through the venturi. Which condition is most favorable to the development of carburetor icing? Carburetor icing is much more likely on warm and humid days. Why? Warm air has a greater capacity to hold more moisture. As a result, condensation or ice is more likely to form as the air temperature is reduced. The point at which water vapor condenses into liquid is called the dew point. When is carburetor icing most likely? 
Icing is most likely to occur when the outside air temperature is between 20 degrees Fahrenheit and 70 degrees Fahrenheit and the air is humid. If you're flying on a day where the dew point isn't far from the ambient air temperature, even a small drop in temperature in the carburetor can lead to the formation of ice. The second reason is evaporation of fuel. If you've ever spilled fuel on your hand at a gas station or when refueling your aircraft, you'll already be aware of how quickly it evaporates. And it feels cold, right? Evaporation occurs when a liquid changes into a gas. To do so, it requires energy. This energy is drawn from the ambient air or anything touching the liquid. Petroleum and kerosene both have weak intermolecular attractions. If that sounds complex, don't worry. It simply means fuel evaporation or happens more readily and quickly with a faster energy transfer. Fast energy transfer means faster temperature loss. And fast temperature loss means ice. What are the symptoms of carburetor icing? This infographic explains the five symptoms of carburetor icing. Carburetor icing can be insidious and happen gradually. As a result, pilots may not notice it until it becomes a significant problem. Here are the signs of carburetor icing, power loss, and lower RPM. If ice builds up, less air is drawn through the carburetor and therefore less fuel. Less fuel and air making their way to the cylinders means that the engine won't produce as much power. Keep a good eye on your RPM gauge. If anything looks untoward, or you find that you are struggling to maintain speed or altitude, carburetor icing could be the root cause. Rough running and vibration. A carburetor is a calibrated component designed to deliver precise ratios of fuel and air to the engine cylinders. If there is a blockage or restriction, and this ratio is thrown out of kilter. The end result could be an engine running too rich or lean, leading to rough running or vibration. Lower EGT less air and fuel burned means a lower temperature at the exhaust. With time, you'll gain a good understanding of what is a normal range of temperatures. If the EGT is particularly low, carburetor icing is a likely culprit. Stuck throttle. Remember we talked about the butterfly valve being a key choke point for carburetor icing? If the ice builds up significantly, it can freeze the throttle in place. Aircraft are particularly prone to this when the throttle has been left in the same position for an extended period. For example, during the cruise phase of the flight, or a long descent. Complete engine failure. And this is an extremely rare occurrence, but it is possible if you've missed all of the previous signs. Fuel and air are the lifeblood of an engine. If either is restricted too much, then the engine could quit entirely. If this happens, you must leave carb heat selected as there may be enough residual heat provided from the exhaust manifold to melt the ice. How to prevent carburetor icing. Carburetor icing can be dangerous, but it's easy to prevent with the right habits. One, use carb heat. Carb heat pulls warm air from the exhaust to melt ice inside the carburetor. Expect rough running at first. That's just melting ice entering the engine. Keep it on until smooth. 2. Watch humidity. Icing happens most when humidity is high, not just when it's cold. If temperature and dew point are close, the risk is high. 3. Lean the mixture. At cruise, use a leaner mixture to reduce fuel evaporation. 4. Add power. Occasionally, ice forms at low power. During descent, level off and add power briefly. 5. Monitor EGT. A sudden drop in EGT can signal ice forming. 6. Throttle stuck. 
If the throttle won't move, it might be frozen due to ice. 7. Engine failure. Rare. But if it happens, keep carb heat on. Carburetor icing is an inherent risk when flying piston-driven aircraft. However, by understanding the causes, we can mitigate that risk. By utilizing onboard systems and following a few standard checks, you'll be able to ensure your aircraft is operating optimally. Having a good working knowledge of aircraft systems is vital.